welcome back friends in the last session we have understood what is the law of variable proportions we said law of variable proportions means the change in the level of output with the change in the level of only one input we know that the production is made possible with the help of factors of production but in the law of variable proportions all the other factors of production remain constant except for one and generally we consider it i mean generally we consider labor as variable so only one factor of production is variable now only one factor of production is variable this means that this law operates in the short run because only in the short run one factor remains variable and all the other factors remain constant now let us understand what is the law of returns to scale like law of variable operates in the short run the law of returns to scale operates in the long run now since it operates in the long run all the factors of production become variable here now there are no factors which are constant the firm can change the level of any of the factors be it land be it labor or any other factor so in short we say law of variable proportion operates in the short run law of returns to scale operates in the long run wherein all the factors can be increased or decreased together now law of returns to scale measures the change in the level of output due to the change in the scale of inputs now there's a difference between change in scale and the change in variable proportion of the inputs change in scale implies when all the factors are increased together or all the factors are decreased together the important words here are all the factors of production however change in variable proportion means where the other factors are constant and only the variable factor of production is changed so the proportion of the variable factor is changed and when this is done we call it we call it the change in variable proportion however when all the factors are increased or decreased together we call it a change in scale so this is the difference and this is possible because the the law of returns to scale operates in the long run where all the factors can be changed together okay now let us understand what is the law of returns to scale now law of returns to scale operates in three stages or in three categories or in three parts the first part is the law of constant returns the second is the law of increasing returns and the last is the law of decreasing returns the law of constant returns states that the level of output increases in proportion to the level of inputs that means if i increase the level of inputs if i increase my labor if i increase my capital if i purchase more land i'll be able to increase my production but by how much by similar percentage that i have increased my inputs let's say i increase my inputs by 50% and if 
the output also increases by 50%, I will say I am operating under the law of constant returns to scale. That means, let us assume that there are two factors of production. First is land, other is labor. And this, the combination of both the inputs gives me output. Now let's say I am using one acre of land and 100 labors. This gives me an output of 1000 units. Now let's say I double the proportion or the scale of inputs. Now this will become 2 acres of land and this will become 200 laborers. Now if I get the output as 2000 units, what has happened? I have increased the scale of inputs and because of this reason, the output has also increased. But what is the proportion of increase? I have increased the level, the scale of inputs by 100% or in other words, I have doubled the scale of inputs. At the same time, the output level has also increased by 100%. That is, it has doubled. So what has happened? There is 100% increase in output because of 100% increase in inputs. If we are operating under this category, we say that we are operating under constant returns to scale wherein the output increases or decreases in proportion to the increase or decrease in the level of input. Initially, I was employing one acre of land and 100 laborers. I got 1000 units. Now, I have doubled my inputs, two acres of land and 200 laborers. What has happened? The output has also doubled. So the output has changed in proportion to input. This is the law of constant returns to scale. So how do you think will we operate under the law of increasing returns to scale? In the last example, we have doubled our inputs and what has happened? Our output also has doubled. So this is the stage of constant returns to scale. What will happen under increasing returns to scale? If we double our inputs, that is I am again employing 200 laborers and 2 acres of land. This will give me an output of more than double, let's say 2500 units. Now what has happened? You can see that the output has increased by 150%. It has become 2.5 times of the original. However, the inputs are only 2 times. They have increased only by 100%. So now an increase in the level of inputs is giving me an increased output. But by an increased proportion. The output here has not only increased in the proportion of inputs, but it has surpassed the percentage of increase in the inputs. It has increased more than the level of inputs. It has increased more than the percentage of inputs. Here the inputs have increased by 100%, they have doubled. The output 
has gone beyond doubling itself it is more than double now so if we are operating under this stage or under this condition we call it as the level of increasing returns to scale or the law of increasing returns to scale where the output or the percentage increase in the output is more than the percentage increase in the inputs and this can be seen from the formula given where the level of increase in outputs is more than the level of increase in inputs and finally we come to the law of decreasing returns to scale now what is law of decreasing returns to scale in the constant returns to scale we have done we have studied that when the inputs are increased outputs also increase but when outputs increase in the proportion of increase in the inputs we call it constant returns to scale however when outputs increase more than the increase in the inputs we call it increased returns to scale and in decreased returns to scale the output does not increase as much as the increase in the inputs the percentage increase in the output is less than the percentage increase in the inputs which means again if i am employing 2 acres of land and 200 laborers this will give me an output of 115 units now if you observe closely you will see that my inputs have doubled but has my output doubled here no it hasn't so we can say that the output has not increased in the proportion of the inputs inputs have increased at a greater proportion at a higher proportion than the output if this is the condition that is prevailing we say that we are operating under the decreasing returns to scale stage so the law of returns to scale has three circumstances three conditions three categories three parts the first is constant returns to scale the second is increasing returns to scale and the third is decreasing returns to scale